In this video, I'm going to answer the questions left by you guys on my Google Summer of Code guide video. If you don't know what Google Summer of Code is, then you should definitely check out that video first. I've left a link to it in the description box below. Now let's just begin with the first question. I'm a second year BTEC CS student, but unfortunately I haven't learned programming in depth yet. I'm interested in contributing to GSOC, but I'm confused which tech stack shall I learn within the next three months to get selected for GSOC. First of all, there's no particular tech stack that's going to increase your chances of getting selected in GSOC. The program covers so many different technologies, so many different projects that use different languages, and you can find something for everyone. There's no one particular tech stack that will guarantee your success. And secondly, your career as a software engineer is so much more than this one program. So it does not make sense for you to revolve your career or structure your career according to this one single program. Instead of picking a tech stack to succeed in this program, you should pick a tech stack that aligns with your interests, your current skill set, and your longer term goals, and then find a project that fits with all of these different things. So don't pick a tech stack for GSOC, pick a tech stack and then find a project that aligns well with your current skill set. Moving on to question number two, I am in second year. I know a little HTML, CSS, little bit of Java, basics of Python and a little bit of Android, but now I also feel interested to learn JavaScript. I want to contribute to open source, but I don't know anything enough so that I can contribute to open source. I've tried many times, but even good first issues seem tough. Also, is there enough time for me to learn JavaScript from starting and then start contributing? Okay, first of all, it looks like you're just jumping from one technology to the other. And I've already said that even good first issues seem tough for you. Then that's a very big signal that you need to upskill and improve your current skills and then move on to contributing. And then your actual question about is there enough time for you to learn JavaScript from starting and then start contributing? Again, it feels like you're just trying to learn JavaScript for this one particular program. Don't center your skills. Don't center your learning around this one particular thing. If you want to learn JavaScript, learn JavaScript, not because you want to participate in this program. And talking about the timeline, I don't really know you. I don't know what your background in programming is like. I don't know about your time commitments. I don't know how much time you're able to spend on learning on a daily basis. I don't know how fast you learn things. So I can't give you an answer if that timeline is enough for you. You should just start learning and stay consistent in your learning. And by the time the program comes around, if you feel confident enough to contribute then good enough if not you can anyways try again the next year next question a humble request to clarify me regarding the application for contribution you said the list of companies participating is not exposed for 2024 so what should i do should i start contributing to them privately that is apart from gsoc and then write proposal to the corresponding project manager which will lead me to get into contributing to google summer of code 2024 and the mail you showed received from GSOC isn't that something that says that you're allowed to contribute or you got that once GSOC 2024 ends stating you are a GSOCer. Okay, so I feel like you have a little bit of a confusion about the timeline and the different stages of the program. So let me quickly just open up the timeline for Google Summer of Code here. I've left a link to this timeline in the description below. So it looks like so far the mentoring organizations have not been announced yet. And these organizations are going to be announced on Feb 21. So first of all, I want to mention these three terms. The first one is an organization. The second one is a project repository. And the third one is a GSOC project. So sometimes people might get confused with what a GSOC project is and what people mean by when they say start contributing to a project. Here's what I mean by these three terms. So first, when the program is announced, the organizations apply to the program to get accepted so that they can participate as part of the program. So you can find the participating organizations from the previous year's programs on the archive. Now a few of these organizations participate every year or participate consecutively for a few years but every year there are also new organizations that participate for the first time. So before the official organizations are announced you can't really know what organizations
organizations are going to be participating or not the best guess that you can make is that if a, an organization x has been participating for the past five years then they are going to participate this year now again there's no guarantee it's just a bet that you're making at this time now these organizations have certain project repositories so what do i mean by that so let's talk about the mozilla organization so they could have different projects or different repositories so by project repositories i could mean the browser mozilla browser now there could be a separate repository for the dev tools or there could be a third repository for some other project now again these repositories or these projects might differ from an year to year but the actual project the gsoc project that gets accepted is a three month long proposal of the features that you're going to build or the amount of work that you're going to do that has been clubbed into a project sort of things for example your gsoc project could be improving the developer tools inside of the mozilla browser now again these actual projects are announced at the same time the mentoring organizations are announced now these projects will be different every year but the related project repositories are going to be more or less the same now that's cleared out before these projects and mentoring organizations are announced what you can do is go to the previous year's accepted projects and see the related project repositories and see if there are any issues or bugs that you can fix as a first time contributor now once these projects are announced now you check if the projects that you've been contributing to are participating this year or not otherwise you switch to another project now there is an application and contribution period you contribute to these project repositories and make contributions that are relevant to the project that you're applying for so here the project is gsoc project that you're applying for then you have to submit an application that application includes a proposal to the project you want to apply for detailing the name of the organization the re project repository and the project that you want to work in because one project repository could also have multiple gsoc projects listed under it once you get accepted once your proposal is accepted then you contribute officially under the program for the span of three months so now you are an accepted contributor but still you have not successfully passed google summer of code you have to pass your two or three evaluations during the program and after you have passed your final evaluation that is when you get the successful participation certificate how did you ask the feedback of proposal how do we get to know about who is our mentor before the project is listed so you wouldn't know who is going to be the mentor and you cannot submit a proposal unless the organizations and projects have already been announced once they're announced then you can start filling up your application and creating a proposal so during that application period as i said you are going to be unofficially contributing to the relevant project Project because your contributions are the major factor that are going to affect your acceptance or rejection of your proposal now since i said you have to be contributing during this application period means that the mentor of that particular project is also actively reviewing and also contributing code to that particular repository so if you are actively contributing then that mentor already knows you or knows you by your username at least now when the application deadline comes closer that is when you have to reach out to them obviously at this point you would know who the mentor is because you know the project that you're going to apply to and then the mentors will be listed under that project think i mailed the mentor that was going to be for that project and i asked them if they would be kind enough to review the draft of my proposal and then they left some comments i improved my proposal and finally submitted it Okay, next question when you said it's better to start contributing to projects before they even announce the projects like do we need to contribute to the projects we wish to work on or some existing projects if it is the projects that we wish to work on how do we identify those projects because i came across some organizations in which i would like to contribute but i didn't find their 2024 projects again you have to go back and look at the archive look for organizations that have been participating for the past few years look at the past accepted projects and inside of those listed projects you'll be able to find a link to the code when you find the link to the code you will be redirected to the repository that the past accepted contributors contributed to so these repositories 
have a higher chance of participating again in the 2024 program. So you can start contributing generally to these repositories. But once the project is announced and once you pick the project that you are interested in, then you start making contributions that are relevant to that project. I hope that cleared things up. Moving on to the next question, how to communicate with maintainer? Is there a single maintainer for whole organization or different maintainers for different projects? Every project has different maintainers or mentors. Again, you will find them in the past projects or you will find them once the projects are announced, the, the name of the mentors will be listed under the projects themselves. So I can't keep providing you links for each and everything. You have to go to the website and then go through all of these projects and do the work yourself, right? Like this question could have just been you exploring the Summer of Code website yourself and you wouldn't really need to ask this question from someone else. The next question, freshers passed out participate who are not students. Again, you could have simply just gone to the website, looked at the eligibility, seen all the criteria and checked if you match the criteria or not and you would have known. Because this is exactly what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go to the website and see if people who don't go to the universities can participate or not. Eligibility for GSOC contributors to participate in the program, a GSOC contributor must be 18 years of age or older upon registration for the program. For the duration of the program, be eligible to work in the country in which they reside, must not be an organization administrator or mentor in the program, and be a student or a beginner to open source software development. So looks like if you're a student or a beginner to open source development, then you can participate. Moving on to the last question, I'm trying to get in touch with a mentor, but many of them from the organization I'm looking for, they do not add a mail or something via LinkedIn is not feasible if they do not connect with you. For now, since the projects are not announced, you don't really know who is going to be a participating mentor. So if you're going to go to the past mentors and start emailing them, they are going to get annoyed. If you're not able to find their mail or something, then that's a good chance that they don't want to be contacted via their personal or work emails. So first of all, the context of this contribution mostly lives on GitHub or some other tools or platforms that that particular organization is using. And avoid mailing them personally until you've established a connection or until you've established some sort of communication with them. Always message in the public communication channels first and only when necessary send a personal email. If you're stuck at something drop a message in the public channels and hopefully someone from the team or some other contributor might respond to you and before asking your questions check that if you've read the de documentation well or if you've gone through the previous messages because it's annoying if every time a new beginner comes this keep asking the same question again and again. So yeah, don't uh, send them LinkedIn messages, I guess. And even if you've like sent a message and if they've not responded, don't follow up with like 10 different emails. It's weird, don't do it. All right, so these are all the relevant questions from that last video. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below. I might do a part two when the application deadline comes closer. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.